How's it going guys? We have a past level question for step one micro, step two internal medicine. Okay, a nearly identical question shows up on one of the NBME exams for step one. In fact, they give you a histo slide with that question. That's not necessary. Okay, complete garbage. So cut to the chase, not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. So 54-year-old man through weak history, progressive difficulty with swallowing. Symptoms began with solids only, have now progressed to liquids as well. Barium swallow shows an irregular mass, the gastroesophageal junction. Biopsy the mass shows B-cell proliferation. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the findings. So let's just whip through the answer choice here. We'll go backwards. Choice D, schistosoma monsoni. Wrong fucking answer. Okay. Schistosoma species, flukes, trematodes, type of worm. Okay, helminth, non-existent yieldness in USMLA, absolute garbage, okay? So Monsoni, Japonicum, they can cause portal hypertension. I don't think I've ever seen these assessed on any NBME content for step one and step two combined, okay? If a, I'm, not, I'm not talking about QBank, I'm talking about NBME content right now. So if you encounter an NBME question that assesses Shisazon, Monsoni, or Japonicum, show me. Okay, and I'll be humbled. I'll be like, oh, wow, okay, I didn't see that. Schistosoma hematobium, in contrast, okay, I mean, it shows up occasionally. It's low yield, but it shows up. That can cause squamous cell carcinoma with the bladder. So let's say dude went to Africa, was swimming in a lake over there, now has high eosinophils, maybe blood in the urine, and that's just squamous cell carcinoma with the bladder, okay, uh, lays its eggs. Schistosoma hematobium lays its eggs in the... Uh, the cystic veins draining the bladder, bladder wall, calcify, granulomatous. And uh, don't confuse the squamous cell carcinoma of the bladder from schistosomiasis with transitional cell carcinoma, which is smoking most common. Aniline dyes, industrial dyes, more specific. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, Paragonimus Westermani, wrong answer. Absolute garbage slash non-existent yieldness on USMLE. Back in the day, a decade ago, when I sat step one and it was numerical and we were fighting for a 280, okay? And I mean, we learned about Paragonimus, which is a fluke, a trematode, helminth, same as schistosoma. Paragonimus you can get from crab meat, okay? And it causes hemoptysis. Now, just for kicks, because I literally haven't looked at this organism, as I just fucking said, non-existent yieldness, okay? So I just Googled it prior to making this question here, and I googled Paragonimus Westermani hemoptysis. Apparently, due to ncbi.gov, uh, it's the most common cause of hemoptysis in the world, okay? Didn't fucking know that, all right? But as I said, for NBME slash USMLE, absolute non-existent yieldness. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, Oncocercovalvulus, wrong answer. So Oncocerciasis, this is a nematode which is a roundworm. And it's actually one of the uh, filariae. Filariae is a fancy term that refers to nematodes that you contract uh, via a bite. Okay, so uh, this is transmitted by the black fly. You could memorize for this, everything is black. So black fly, uh, black lesion on the skin it can cause uh, where it bites you, uh, black eyesight, it causes blindness, okay? It'll be like an eight-year-old uh, in the Amazon. Uh, that's literally the vignette, okay? I've seen one more difficult vignette uh, where it wasn't so clear, but it was clearly a helminth infection with high eosinophils, and Oncocercovalvulus is clearly a, a worm here, which would cause high eosinophils. And uh, you can treat this with ivermectin, Oncocercovalvulus. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, Helicobacter pylori is the correct answer. So H. pylori causes malt lymphoma, okay? Mucosal associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma. Lymphomas are almost always B cell, okay? So you do a biopsy, uh, and it's a non-Hodgkin lymphoma, all right? So Hodgkin in contrast, okay, you got your Reed-Sternberg cells. Uh, those are B cells that look like owl eye appearance on a microscope. They're CD15, 30 positive. We're talking non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which just means all other lymphomas, Okay, so like Burkitt, follicular, anything else. So just we have we have a type of NHL called malt lymphoma. And 
the NBME question that I uh, saw this in, they said a regular mass at the gastroesophageal junction. Sure, it could occur at the antrum. I mean, that's also where H. pylori likes to infect. So just anywhere in the around the stomach or uh, antrum LES, I mean, that's classic for malt lymphoma. And if you treat the helicobacter pylori, H. pylori, of course, uh, is a, uh, a spiral-shaped uh, bacterium, okay, or coil-shaped. And if you treat the H. pylori, the malt lymphoma can actually, in some cases, regress. Okay, so you treat H. pylori with CAP, C-A-P, so clarithromycin, which is a macrolide, amoxicillin, and a proton pump inhibitor, such as omeprazole, okay? Clonorhacus sinensis, wrong answer. So similar to paragonimus and schistosoma, it's a fluke, a trematode, a worm, okay? So this can cause cholangiocarcinoma, which means cancer of the gallbladder, okay? So actually, cholangiocarcinoma is cancer of the bile ducts, not, not gallbladder. If you have cancer of the gallbladder, we just call that literally gallbladder cancer. But cholangiocarcinoma uh, that's going to be cancer of the bile ducts, non-existent yieldness, Clonarchus sinensis, and Yosemite. I've seen one question in a smoker where they gave a uh, cholangiocarcinoma on a 2CK surge question. Okay, it's a long fucking discussion. If you have a patient who's got increased direct bilirubin and ALP, so they have obstructive findings, jaundice, and it sounds like pancreatic cancer, okay, because head of pancreas cancer obstructs the common bile duct, and you have no elevation of pancreatic enzymes, you're like, okay, this sounds like pancreatic cancer. I'm going to do CT of the abdomen. And th that's how you diagnose pancreatic cancer. And then they tell you the CT is negative in the last line. You're going to do ERCP as the next best step because you're looking for cholangiocarcinoma, bile duct cancer. Point is, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.